Mental health problems in young people are at high rates and it's said that 1 in 10 young people are affected by a mental health problem. Mental health problems aren't something to be ashamed of and are very common. Some of the most common problems found in children and young people are depression, generalised anxiety disorder or GAD and ADHD. Different anxiety disorders can have different triggers However, some of the causes of anxiety disorders are the death of a close friend or relative, becoming seriously ill or getting injured in an accident, or school-related issues like exams and bullying. However, some people are born more anxious or stressed people, and it doesn't always have a trigger. In this video, I am going to look at two young people's perspectives of mental health and what they think of different aspects of mental health in young people. I'm Alice Godwin and I'm 17. My name is Becky Toogood and I'm 17. Yes and yes to both. I, well, I mean my friends, I've had friends who've had depression, I've had friends who've had anxiety. Um, and I, when I was younger, never got diagnosed, probably had depression, probably still have anxiety of some form. Um, I've never suffered myself, but I know quite a few people that has, for example, I know my best friend suffers from mental health issues. Yes, I definitely think there has. I think most of my friends probably suffer with something, just don't realise it. Do you think there's a reason for that? I think at the moment it's because people are getting really stressed by schoolwork. I think people are getting like genuinely anxious because of the work that they're given at school and because people expect more of them than they used to. I think like parents and schools put more pressure on people than they used to. I don't think there's been a rise in people with mental health problems, but I think there's been a rise in people admitting they have something wrong and going to get help and kind of being open about it. Because I feel like there's less stigma now from years ago, say in like the 70s, because people are a lot more accepting and a lot less prejudiced, but obviously there's still quite a long way to go. I think that it would be, it's important to keep talking about it and to keep talking about the fact that it's really, really normal. Like, I think it's like one in four people will experience a mental health problem every year. Like, I think it's important to let people know that it's okay to feel different things. It doesn't mean that you're broken. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It just means that your brain literally is not working properly. Like if you're feeling depressed, it's not because like, oh, I've got like a terrible life or I don't appreciate things well enough. It's because your brain isn't producing the right things. And like, I think it's important to let people know that and to let them know that it's okay. I feel like it's just more awareness really. Just kind of getting everyone together and making everyone feel okay with themselves because obviously mental health problems you can't see so no one really understands them unless you know someone going through it or going through it yourself so I feel like some people might feel a bit ashamed if they don't really know anyone else with it so it's just kind of everyone coming together and just talking about it and maybe a place for people to go with other people suffering the same thing so everyone can kind of talk to to each other and understand themselves better. I think it can have positive and negative. Like I think for like, especially younger people, like for our age, I don't know as it's a negative impact. I'd say the internet's given me the opportunity to speak to people. I think like online counseling is incredibly powerful as a tool. I've used it before. I know so many people that have, and it just complete anonymity, like being able to speak to somebody about your problems. And the same kind of thing with like making friends online who you can relate to, who you can speak to, forums. I think if you're using it correctly, it can be positive. But for a lot of young people, all they're seeing on their, t their feeds and their timelines is like, I don't know, stereotypical. Maybe they're just seeing loads of pictures of Kylie Jenner or Kendall or whoever Jenner, Kardashian, they're seeing. They might, that's going to cause them to feel like they're gonna hate they might hate themselves they might hate the way they look they might become anxious because of it you know low self-esteem so i think it depends on how you're using it really yes because say some people 
you can find anything on there. So some people might feel a bit self-conscious because obviously on social media, people only post the good aspects about their lives. So if someone's feeling a bit sad or say if someone's got depression, um, they'll only see the good aspects of everyone else's lives and feel like they're not as good as everyone else. Or if they'll see like these Instagram models or something, people might feel like that's how they're supposed to look. And there's just all this negative kind of stress on everyone from social media about how they're supposed to act, how they're supposed to look, and what they're supposed to do. And as well, cyberbullying is really easy these days. So a lot of people kind of say negative things to people online, which they wouldn't say to someone's face. And yeah, that happens a lot. I think if you have someone who's older, like if you're, I don't know, say you're 14, and you do speak to, speak to, if you don't feel comfortable speaking to your parents and try and speak to a teacher, um, they're always, even if they don't seem it, they're always wanting to help. They want to help. Um, your parents might not seem like they do, and it can be hard, but like try and speak to your parents. If not, there are loads of online services. The one that I'd recommend if you live in the southwest of England specifically is called Cooth. Um, it's like online, online anonymous counselling where you just get given a random counsellor you can speak to them for an hour they will give you things to do speak to someone about it maybe a lot of people don't feel comfortable with going to their GP but I feel like that's a good thing to do because they can refer you to um, people that can help you and they can say if you need any medicine or anything they can get you that as well and yeah they have a lot of knowledge on things so if there's somewhere that you can go maybe a lot of people don't know about it if you go to your gp they can really show you all the right things you need and things to do 51 <laughs> percent of young people believe that anyone their age diagnosed with a mental illness would be embarrassed this is a really scary fact and it shows that we need to keep the conversation about mental health going we need to reassure people that they don't need to be embarrassed or scared to speak up if they are worried.